Hi guys, welcome to Classic Sitcoms Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Before we get started, I ask you to please subscribe and please share these out. Appreciate it. Uh, today's video is on some facts. We're going to get up a little bit in time here. Here's some facts on the Dukes of Hazard. Do you remember that? Yeehaw! Here we go. Uh, the CBS chairman hated the Dukes of Hazard. CBS chairman William Paley never quite bought into the idea of spinning his opinion to match the company line. Having built CBS from a radio station to one of the big three television networks, he had harvested talent as diverse as Norman Lear and Lucy. A uh, marked contrast to the southern fried humor of the Dukes of Hazzard. And in his 80s, when it became a top ten series and seeing no reason to censor himself, he repeatedly and publicly Described the show as lousy. The Dukes of Hazard's General Lee, that's the car, got 35,000 fan letters a month. And while John Schneider and Tom Wompat uh, were the stars of the show, both the actors and the show's producers quickly found out that the main attraction was the 1969 Dodge Dodger, or Dodge Charger, sorry, dubbed the General Lee, that trafficked brothers Bo and Luke Duke from one place to another. Of the 60,000 letters the series is, was receiving every month in 1981, 35,000 of them wanted information or pictures of the car. Dennis Quaid wanted to be the Dukes of Hazard Luke Duke, but on one condition. When the show began casting in 78, producers threw out a wide net for searching for the leads. Dennis Quaid was among those interested in the role of Luke Duke, which eventually went to Tom Wapat. Uh, but he had one condition. He only agreed to do the show if his then wife, PJ Souls, was cast as Daisy, as Daisy Duke. Souls was not a proper fit for the supporting part, which put Quaid off. Catherine Baca was eventually cast as Daisy. Uh, John Schneider pretended to be a redneck for his Dukes of Hazard audition. Uh, Schneider, a native of New York, was only 18 years old when he read for the part. The problem, producers wanted someone 24 to 30 years old. Uh, he lied about his age and passed himself off as a southern archetype, uh, strutting in, wearing cowboy hat, drinking a beer, and spitting batter. He also told them he could do stunt driving. It was a good enough performance to land him the show. Uh, his co-stars John Schneider and Tom Wompat met while taking a poop. After Schneider was cast, the show needed to locate an actor who could compliment Bo. Stage actor Wompat was flown in for screen test. Schneider happened to be in the bathroom, and while Pat walked in after him, two began talking about music, and Schneider had seen the guitar under the stall door. Found they had an easy uh, camaraderie. After flushing, the two did a scene. While Pat was hired immediately. Uh, Catherine Box, omnipresent Jean Shorts were such a hit that any kind of cutoffs quickly became known as Daisy Dukes, still to this day, named after her character. But they were so skimpy that the network was concerned. Censors wouldn't allow them. A negotiation began and it eventually decided that Bach would wear some extremely sheer pantyhose to make sure there was no clothing malfunctions. Uh, Nancy Reagan was a fan of the Dukes of Hazard Daisy. Shirley Moore, Bach's former grade school teacher, went on to work in the White House. After Bach sent her a poster, she was surprised to hear back from then First, uh, then first Lady Nancy Reagan who was enamored with it. Uh, I'm the envy of the White House, and I'm having your poster framed, Moore wrote in the letter. Mrs. Reagan saw the picture and fell in love with it. Box sent more posters, which presumably became part of the decor during the Reagan administration. Uh, the Dukes of Hazard stars had some very bizarre contract demands. While Pat Schneider famously walked off the series in 1982, after demanding a cut of the show's massive merchandising revenue, which was, by one estimate, more than $190 million in 1981 alone. They were replaced with Byron Cherry and Christopher Mayer, the cousins of the Duke boys, who were reviled by fans for being scabs. Uh, the two leads eventually came back, but it wasn't the only time Warner Brothers had to deal with an irate actor. James Best, who portrayed the uh, Sheriff uh, Roscoe P. Coltrane refused to film five episodes because he had no private dressing room in which to change his clothes. 
The production just hosed him down when he got dirty. Ben Jones, who played Cooter, the mechanic, briefly left because he wanted his character to sport a beard, and the producers preferred that he be clean-shaven. A miniature car was used for some of the stunts in the Dukes of Hazard. As established, the General Lee was a primary attraction for the viewers of the series. For years, the show wrecked dozens of chargers by jumping, crashing, and otherwise abusing them, uh, which created some terrific footage, but for its seventh and final season in 1985, the show turned to a miniature effects team in an effort to save on production cost. It was cheaper to mangle a Hot Wheels-style model than the real thing. It was a source of embarrassment to all of us on the show, Wompat told E. Um, the Dukes of Hazard famous hood slide was an accident. A staple and eventually a cliche of action films everywhere, the slide over the hood was popularized by Tom Wompat. While it may have been tempting to take credit, uh, he said it was unintentional and that the first time he tried clearing the hood, the car's antenna wound up injuring him. Uh, the Dukes of Hazard cartoon went international. Warner Brothers capitalized on the show's phenomenal popularity with an animated series, The Dukes, which was produced by Hanna-Barbera and aired in 83. Taking advantage of the form, uh, the Duke boys traveled internationally, racing Boss Hog through Greece or Hong Kong, uh, perhaps owing uh, to the fact that the live-action series was already considered enough of a cartoon. The animated series only lasted 20 episodes. And last but not least, in 2015, Warner Brothers banned the Confederate flag from the Dukes of Hazard merchandising. At the time the series originally aired, little was made of the General Lee sporting a Confederate flag on its hood. In 2015, after then South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley spoke out against the depiction of the flag in popular culture, Warner Brothers elected to stop licensing products with the original roof. My, my, my. The company announced that all future Dukes merchandise would drop the design element. Schneider disagreed with the decision, telling The Hollywood Reporter, Is the flag used as such in other applications? Yes, but not uh, certainly not on the Dukes. Labeling anyone who has, a, who has the flag a racist seems unfair to those who are clearly never meaning no harm. And that's fact. And that's all I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just, I like the Dukes of Hazard. And <laughs> matter of fact, the creator didn't live too far from here in a little town called Lennoxburg, Kentucky. Uh, I don't think the population even hit 100 people. And uh, actually, that's where I do my, my cutting up, cutting grass out that way. So, um, like I say, that's all I got for you. Don't forget the Beverly Hills, uh, Hillbilly's Facts and Trivia. Uh, we're like 29 subscribers away. Uh, get your family involved, get your friends involved, get them subscribed. Let's get it to a thousand and we'll start the contest. Have a great day. God bless and I'll be praying for you.